Good morning and welcome everybody to the uh, Lab 7 session for Wednesday morning. Uh, I understand you've all got midterms that you're fretting about this week, so I understand that the participation is a little low, but I hope everybody will be able to watch the, uh, the stuff that I'm going to record this morning uh, so that they can see it later if they need to. Now, on Monday, I hope everybody had watched the, uh, the video on introducing this set of labs and had also followed on to uh, build the code that you need in order to get the job done. Uh, so now this morning, what I'd like to do is introduce some of the hardware and walk through and just make sure everybody's working with the same, uh, the same circuitry uh, and, and the things are gonna work out for you. So in the before section, uh, there was a bunch of stuff about temperature sensors and suggestions about how to write the sketch. If you check under the temperature sensors, it talks about thermocouples, thermistors, or a TMP36. The TMP36 is an analog uh, temperature sensor that we're not using this year. However, it has similar slow response to the thermistor that we are using this year. If you follow either of these links to thermocouples or thermistors, it'll lead you into the textbook where there's a whole lot more information about the thermocouples you're gonna be using and about the uh, thermistors you're gonna be using. Your thermistor looks like this with this little stainless steel can on the end. Uh, and part of what you're gonna be working on today is getting your code to work so that you can make a transition between the voltage that you're measuring, either from the output of the amplifier for the thermocouple or from the voltage divider bridge for the thermistor and translate that into temperature. The relationships you need to do that are all here within this section. You'll just need to figure out how to do that. Now, this is what you should be doing in the, in the during system section. First, make sure that everything's actually working, that you can get some signals. Only once you've got those signals should you be uh, concentrating on translating them to temperature. If you can't get the voltage signals to behave the way they should in terms of warming up and cooling down and changing like we showed in the, uh, the blank slate video, then you're not going to succeed in translating data into temperature. So one step at a time. A bunch of people uh, yesterday were unsure about how to deal with the amplification. It talks about an INA125 amplifier, and it's important to have a look back at the stuff from Lab 6, which I told you you should read, and you can find out a lot about amplification here. This is the only lab this year where we'll be using the amplifiers, so you'll need to figure out what the gain is. Basically, a gain is going to be the multiplier that uh, increases the voltage input from the thermocouple to something large enough that you can read with the, uh, the output on your itsy bitsy. So uh, another thing to keep in mind here is that uh, anytime you're looking for something like an INA125 instrumentation amplifier, all the stuff that we're using is common enough that just Googling it will get you to about the right place. There's the Texas Instruments data sheet for the INA125. And it's got a whole lot of information. And just as a hint down here somewhere, it talks about setting the gain. So that'll give you, give you a, a step in the right direction. Now, what I'd like to do is, is switch over and have a look at the circuit and walk you around some of the hardware here. This is the setup that you should have, and it looks a little busier than some of the stuff you've done before. But let's start here. This is the uh, BMP280 that you've used before, and the yellow and gray wires here are just going from SDA and SCL over to SDA and SCL to get you the digital signal that you're gonna need to measure a cold junction temperature. It's important to measure that cold junction temperature because that's the temperature that the connections from the thermocouple are being made at to the amplifier. And that cold junction temperature is basically the offset. You won't see a 
a non-zero voltage here until the thermocouple bead is at a temperature different from the, uh, from the cold junction. Now this is the thermocouple. You can see the white wire coming out here and you can see there's the same white wire coming in here and it's got this little tiny bead at the end. That's where the temperature is actually sensed is at that bead at that junction between the two wires. The voltage that you'll get here on pins six and seven of the input on the INA125 amplifier, it's going to be really small. Even if this thermocouple bead is 100 degrees Celsius higher than the cold junction temperature, a point you won't reach, it'll only be four millivolts voltage here. That's going to be really hard to measure with your uh, itsy bitsy as a direct analog voltage. But with this gain resistor here chosen appropriately, you can multiply this four millivolts by say 100 to make it 40 millivolts or 500 to make it 200 millivolts or pick your, pick your gain as, as appropriate uh, to get an appropriate output over here. On pin uh, 10 and 11 here, joined by the little yellow wire, uh, we get the output voltage and that voltage is being carried over here to, uh, to pin uh, A1 on the input to our itsy bitsy. The other voltage that we're interested in is this voltage that's on pin uh, 13 here, and it's carried over to pins four and five, and that is the pseudo ground voltage. So we've set this amplifier up in pseudo ground mold, mode. That means that the output is gonna be relative to this 1.24 volt pseudo ground voltage that we're using. So if there's zero input, we should see the blue wire and the white wire both at about the same voltage. If we increase the out input, we should see the white wire move away from the pseudo ground voltage. And the polarity of that motion will depend on which of these wires we plugged into which of these uh, inputs, pins six and seven. The INA, like all integrated circuits, numbers around a loop like this counterclockwise, starting at the top here. So that's one, two, three, and so on, up to uh, eight and nine, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on, up to 16. So those are the pin numbers on the, on the chip here. One of the things that's uh, really important is there needs to be a uh, a current return path to allow a little bit of current to flow in the circuit. And that's why we've got this 10K resistor here. That's something that an electrical engineer might be able to explain the electronics of. I'm not sure I can, except that I read it in the data sheet. It told me it needed to be there. So I've added this 10K resistor from here over to uh, the pseudo ground voltage. If you don't have that, you won't get sensible output. The other thing that you have to worry about here in setting the gain is to make sure that you're not trying to get a larger output voltage than the amplifier can actually deliver. The input power to the amplifier coming in on pins one and two here is 3.3 volts. So the output can't possibly be more than 3.3 volts. And in fact, if you check the data sheet, it's only going to be something like 2.2, 2.4, something like that is the maximum you can possibly get out. So from this 1.24 pseudo ground, we probably don't want to increase the voltage by more than maybe 700 millivolts or, or maybe as much as, as one volt, but we definitely don't want to uh, push the voltage way up here because we'll just hit the wall and we won't get an increasing voltage for increasing temperature when we actually get around to measuring on our coffee cup. The other sensor you're using today is this thermistor. This is inside this stainless steel case, nice and neat and tidy and waterproof. And uh, we can put that directly in our coffee cup as we can the, uh, the thermocouple. Both of these will withstand immersion in, in your coffee or in, in the hot water that you're using. Now this thermistor changes resistance with temperature and it changes resistance quite a lot. So we can wire it up just in a uh, voltage divider the same way as we did previously. 
And that's what we've got here, the brown wire from ground, the black wire going to pin A5, and then a 10K resistor bridging over to uh, uh, pin two, which we're using as a high voltage source. So the voltage we read on pin A5 will vary depending on the resistance that we see in this uh, thermistor. You'll need to figure out that relationship. You'll start by measuring the analog input, which is that zero to 65,000 number. You'll need to convert that to a voltage, then convert that to figure out what the resistance of the thermistor is, and then convert from that thermistor resistance to a temperature. So this is gonna be a, a multi-step process that you've got to work your way through. Um, I think that covers all the components here. So once you've got everything working and when you pinch the sensors with your fingers, you can see a little bit of change so that you know that things are behaving the way you expect them to. Then you're gonna take these and attach them to your coffee cup using whatever attachment mode your group has decided on. Once you've got them attached and you're getting sensible temperatures, something close to room temperature for the coffee cup with nothing in it, boil up a kettle full of water and pour that into the coffee cup. Watch while the temperature rises. You should see that this temperature on the thermocouple rises faster than the temperature on the thermistor. And once they've equalized and you've got a, a result, you can take them off the coffee cup and watch them cool in the air. In the air, they should still be faster for the thermocouple and slower for the thermistor. And once they've equilibrated, then you can put them right into the coffee cup. When they're in the coffee cup, I expect to see the uh, temperature change much more quickly because water is way more conductive than air. And finally, once that you've got that coffee cup data, you can take it out and set it aside on the desk again. And that'll get you your full set of data. Once you've got the lab working, it only takes about five minutes to get, uh, to get the data. And that includes the time that it'll take for your, uh, for your kettle to boil. So I think that should do it. Um, I hope that gets you a good start on, uh, on lab number seven to get, uh, get data from your temperature sensors. I'd be happy to take any questions now. I don't see anything in the, in the chat window. But you could unmute your mic and uh, and ask if you've got anything that needs clearing up. <laughs>